Hi, I'm Donna Gans, I'm a National Lymphoma Nurse Manager with Lymphoma Australia and we're here today at ASH 2019 in Orlando, Florida and I'm joined today with... My name is Dr Nada Hamad, I'm a Staff Specialist Haematologist in St Vincent's in Sydney. I have a number of leadership roles in Australia including the President of the Bone Marrow Transplant Society of Australia and New Zealand. I'm also the Chair of the Cooperative Group BMT Working Group um, at the ALLG um, and I'm also New South Wales Transplant uh, Network Chair. Excellent, well said. Um, and it's, it's really honour to have you here today. Um, I'm very, very interested, especially one of your um, abstracts and presentations you did here at ASH um, about electronic medical records, especially for the rural patients um, that we help with this. Can you just explain a little bit about the project? So, um, you know, in haematology, we have such an incredible amount of research going on at the moment, particularly in malignant haematology, which is my area of interest, as well as transplant. And these therapies have really revolutionized outcomes for patients with malignant uh, disorders in haematology. Unfortunately, one of the major, you know, practical hurdles for patients in regional or rural Australia is access to these therapies. And from a practical perspective, how do we deliver those therapies safely in areas where there's limited expertise? or limited resources. And so one of the major passions that I have is about access to all patients in Australia for equity's sake. Um, one of the ways we do that is to make sure that there is expert clinicians that go out to rural services so patients can get services closer to home. Um, but to facilitate that, we really have to make it easier for clinicians to do that. And having an electronic record that they can access when they are in Sydney and they're thinking about the patient and what to do with the patient, having access to their clinical information in terms of blood results and um, pathology results that are actually performed locally at their sites. Um, if that is made easier, simpler, faster, clinicians are more likely to go out there and support those communities um, to be able to deliver interesting novel therapies at a site, um, you really need a little bit of, of ease in, in terms of, you know, to, in, in, to incentivize clinicians to do it. And what's also exciting is it allows other staff members who are so dedicated in rural services, the nursing staff there are extraordinary. Um, the support staff in terms of social workers and, um, you know, allied health services, they all know each other, they live in a small community, and it's an absolute delight and pleasure to work with such a committed team and sometimes I feel that they find themselves very isolated they can't yeah. really call the clinician they can't email them and message them easily and having an electronic record means that they can just type their ideas their thoughts the patients issues when their patient walks in just to say I've got a, a problem a rash I can see that in real time yeah. and it really does improve how we apply good holistic care to people who are very, very um, distant and isolated from the health sector. I mean, they're fantastic, wonderful communities, and I think it's a shame that we don't have infrastructure to facilitate that. So our poster was the first, I think, time that um, we managed to map a rural hematology service. It's an outreach service, so we have experts from a Center of Excellence at St. Vincent's in Sydney going out to a rural center in Griffith and delivering phenomenal care, and I think the next step beyond that is actually to compare outcomes between Sydney patients and rural patients to make sure that we are striving for parity. We're not just, you know, trying to make it easier yeah. for us to go, yeah. but to actually make sure that we're doing right by our patients in a rural centre. Yeah. Um, and then beyond that, just thinking strategically about how do we grow that service? How do we deliver really exciting cutting edge care in a rural setting? And that sounds fantastic and I know that's a lot of the, the conversations I have with patients across Australia, especially those living in rural and remote areas and having to travel to um, the major capital cities across the country, how isolating it can be when they do go home and how, how scary it is for these patients too if they end up being at a re another hospital that they don't know and they're having to re-explain the information that um, is wrong with them, the treatment they've had, and it can be terribly scary. So I can imagine this can bring patients home a lot quicker. Absolutely and you know I strive not to keep patients in Sydney. I'm a mother of three. My patients have lives, they have families, they have people they look after. They want to sleep in their own beds and that's only fair. So you know we try and minimize 
the amount of time patients spend in Sydney by doing a lot of the work that they need done to make the diagnosis and make a treatment plan and then send them home so they can get care delivered closer to home and we will go to them and one of the next projects we're really working hard on is facilitating regular telehealth service clinics so mm -hmm. patients get closer follow-up around chemotherapy and also then to try and introduce telehealth to clinical trials because I think you really need a solid platform to be able to build on to deliver those sorts of really cutting-edge technological innovations. That sounds fantastic. What sort of a computer base do you use for the electronic um, so the doctors can access it from their, their surgeries in the country? So basically there's a program called Mosaic and it's an electronic record that allows clinicians to put in their clinical notes to import clinical information like blood test results from anywhere in the country and to import all the documents about imaging, x-rays that all are in the one place. And that record system is housed at St. Vincent's and in fact um, the Murrumbidgee Local Area Health Service invested and bought a license for Mosaic at their site but had no one to support them to actually use it. So we really build a bridge that took a long time to navigate through the bureaucracy to allow the Murrumbidgee Area Health Service to just use the St. Vincent's record. So the record does not get broken. So when the patient comes to Sydney, it's the same file. When the patient goes to Griffith, it's the same file. No need to have two separate files, which means that you can really see the timeline of patient progress. You know, when the patient comes to emergency in St. Vincent's, we know what happened. And when the patients go to emergency in Griffith, they know what happened. And I think that is, you know, something we don't focus on. We focus on a lot on this, you know, wonderful research that goes in the laboratory, but we sometimes miss the mark about how to get it across to that last mile. Out of the 10 miles, the last mile is the hardest. How do you get it to patients and deliver it safely? And it's often that just basic communication and break, break, communication breakdown can, can really, do, yeah, make it really hard for patients and quite considerate. And I imagine it'd be quite um, helpful for the staff that are working in Griffith as well to actually know exactly what's going on, be less daunting looking after these post-transplant patients too so they feel a lot more supported and ultimately they can give better care as well. Absolutely. And one of the highlights for me, you know, with this project, I'm quite actually um, grateful and surprised that it made it to an audience like the American Society of Hematology. But really what hit home for me was one of the nurses said, thank you so much for doing this. You've made our lives easier. And I, you know, it's much easier to communicate and it makes her jobs so much more fulfilling to be able to do this in such a comprehensive way. And, you know, yeah. that really hit home for me because it meant that what we were trying to achieve actually did what it was supposed to do. It's fantastic. And you look at rolling it out to other hospitals around New South Wales or so in Australia? Infrastructure in Australia is very different. So the way people do outreach varies from state to state. Um, in Queensland, they have a lot of telehealth services, but they don't necessarily use the same record system. Um, I would hope that this would inspire a little bit of change in that structure across the country um, because the outreach services are very different from, from, from site to site and state yeah. to state. I think this is the first time it's been done where the two area health services, although they're two separate services, have agreed to use the one record. And, you know, to be honest, that was really the hardest part of the work. <laughs> that took about 18 months to get through all the yeah. red tape hurdles. But, you know, once it was done, it was a phenomenal outcome. Yeah, oh, that's incredible because Australia, we think one country, we'd have, we've got so many different electronic systems that's per right. hospital even next door. So thank you so much. It's amazing work. And especially a country like Australia, it's so diverse. Most of our population is only on the East Coast. It's great to see that we can actually actually um, connect people to the right people. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you for having me. Thank you.